Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm talking about fibroids with nine tips to help with uterine fibroids. So this is really gonna help you. I have other videos on the causes of uterine fibroids and some of the symptoms, but these are my best nine tips on how to help you if you're suffering with uterine fibroids. So let's get right to it. Tip number one is to fix your leptin resistance. So number one, you have to discover if you do have leptin resistance, but this is really, really common common with anybody who has chronic inflammation and hormonal imbalances. So something definitely to get checked out in terms of your symptomatology. So if you crave carbohydrates, especially before bed, if you tend to hold on to a little bit too much body weight or you're severely underweight and have anorexia, this can be related to leptin resistance as well. And if your circadian rhythms are out of sync, these would be some of the indications of leptin resistance. But I have other videos all about leptin resistance. You don't have to figure that out all now check those out so that you can sort of determine if you may have leptin resistance based on all the symptoms and what you can do about it but some of the the tips for fixing the leptin resistance that I've shared in the other videos is to definitely watch the sunrise in the morning as well as the sunset you also want to get some natural vitamin D exposure and this is really important because there definitely is a link with vitamin D deficiency and developing uterine fibroids so in this study we can see that in vitro studies prove that vitamin D efficacy in inhibiting the uterine fibroid growth and this is really important to be able to know number one what your vitamin D status is but number two that you can actually actively do something about improving your vitamin D so whether that is yes with sun exposure is really important but sometimes we often need to supplement as well so finding a high quality vitamin D supplement that's highly absorbed is something that we can help you out with We'll put some links below in the description to help you in that department. Also for fixing leptin resistance, you want to definitely decrease your carbohydrates in your diet, especially refined sugars, and stopping eating at least a few hours before bedtime. And this really has a lot to do with our melatonin levels and our leptin signaling. Also cold therapy is one of the things that I love to do. So whether that's putting ice packs on your body or doing cold ice dunks and cold showers, this is really helpful as well for resetting that signaling of your leptin. Also making sure that you decrease your artificial light exposure especially after the sun has gone down and your EMF exposure as well and getting that proper night's sleep so melatonin helps to also shut down our fibroid growth and we know that we secrete our melatonin when we're sleeping and in this study it actually has proven that melatonin helped to reduce that fibroid tumor growth so this is really important to know that yes naturally you can really have an impact on what is happening with either prevention but also in the treatment of uterine fibroids. Okay tip number two is to decrease the xenoestrogens that you may be exposed to. So these are the toxic estrogens in our environment. Some of the most common ways that we get these xenoestrogens into our body would be the use of sunscreen. So there are certain chemicals in some sunscreens like 4-MBC and benzophenone which are known to be endocrine disruptors and xenoestrogens as well as plastic so we know plastic water bottles plastic food containers never microwave a plastic food container that's the worst thing that you can do but really limit your use of plastic food containers for leftovers and things I always try to use in our home we're always using glass as well as parabens which I think in terms of the beauty industry this has gotten a lot better but there still are hidden parabens in some beauty products and creams and moisturizers and things so you have to be very wary of these as well as insecticides so if you're not eating organic produce and foods then these insecticides can also be endocrine disruptors especially xenoestrogens toothpaste even we have to be concerned about so always go towards a more natural toothpaste and also limit your exposure to perfumes and fra fragrances so whether this is in laundry supplies this is in perfumes that you actually spray on your skin one thing you can do is maybe spray it on your clothes and not directly on your skin so that you have a little bit less exposure another tip is to watch red food coloring so this is an endocrine disruptor a xenoestrogen so whether that's red drinks 
Uh, whenever you see that FDNC red color in any type of food or non-food like candies and things that contain the red food dye, you want to avoid this as much as possible. Also air fresheners, especially the plug-in ones, I hate those in terms of toxicity levels and dryer sheets can also be a big problem in terms of thinking of those artificial smells, not good for your estrogen levels. And dry cleaning your clothes can also be, you know, uh, another exposure to these xenoestrogens. So try to do your best to limit your exposure to all of these. Okay, tip number three for helping with uterine fibroids is to cut out the bad fats from your diet. So I've talked about this a lot in other videos as well. So you want to decrease those polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially your seed oils, vegetable oils, margarine, your trans fats, uh, canola oil, not my favorite in terms of, you know, sunflower oil, safflower oil. Try to limit your exposure because as humans, we tend to get too much of these in the diet. It. Often it's hidden in processed foods and we want to decrease that exposure, especially for uterine fibroids. You want to increase your healthy fats, so definitely increasing your DHA, so whether that's from seafood or small fish that have the DHA. And also coconut oil is a great source of, you know, a great fat that is really important in terms of balancing not only leptin levels, but also helping to keep you full, helping to get you off the carbohydrates, but helps with uterine fibroids as well. As a preventative. So we've come this far, but make sure you stay tuned right until tip number nine, which is my favorite tip on how to deal with uterine fibroids naturally, something that you probably have never heard before. Tip number four is to look at some supplements in terms of maybe you are deficient and magnesium is probably the most common deficiency. And magnesium is so important because it helps with our estrogen conjugation. And we know that too much estrogen and having estrogen dominance is definitely related Related to uterine fibroids. So getting enough magnesium, whether it's from magnesium foods or from a high quality supplement. And my favorite is a magnesium bisglycinate. So that's really important to get in, in an absorbable form, but the magnesium bisglycinate can, can actually help with muscle contractions, help with cramping, but also helps with healing the leaky gut. So that's really important. So we'll share some links as to a great magnesium that you can also use yourself. Another supplement that's really important is zinc. So making sure that you have enough zinc, whether it's from dietary sources of zinc. I have other videos all about that. But zinc really does help to, to support our progesterone production. So getting enough zinc is important. And one of the ways that you may know that you're zinc deficient is if you get those white spots on your nails, which is very common. But again, I have a whole other video all on zinc deficiencies. So check that out to get more information there. Tip number five is to ensure that you have a healthy microbiome. So getting enough of the good quality probiotics in your diet is really important. So whether that's from sauerkraut, maybe it's from kimchi, which is like a spicy sauerkraut and more Asian fusion, as well as yogurt. So a high quality yogurt, again, without the sugar, because you want to watch that sugar intake. And maybe you have to go to a supplement as well to ensure that you're getting the high enough CFUs of those active probiotics probiotics, that active microflora. So you want to find a probiotic that's designed for your human digestive tract. And that's really important. That doesn't have the fillers and the magnesium stearate and all those things that shouldn't be in a probiotic supplement. Tip number six is to use a castor oil pack. So this is in another video that I shared how to make a castor oil pack. So make sure you check that out. And this is really soothing to the abdominal area. If you do have the uterine fibroids, especially if you've got the cramping, I just ask that you don't do it during your cycle, during your menses, because uh, it can help with blood flow. So you don't necessarily want to stimulate that during your, your cycle, but a great way to help to actually shrink uterine fibroids. And, you know, a lot of women have successfully been able to do that. And that's just the only tip that they did was using the castor oil pack. So that's very promising. I want to hear from you. So make sure you leave it in the comments below. If this is something that you've tried or you want more information about, I am definitely here for you. So leave that in the comments below. Tip number seven is to increase something called the indole 3 carbonyl foods. So these foods are fantastic for helping to conjugate your estrogen. So in that grouping is broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts and cabbage. So this family of vegetables have this I3C indole 3 carbonyl and it's really great for minimizing, especially the toxic estrogens from your body. 
Tip number eight is to include some herbal medicine. So some of the ones that are specifically known to help with uterine fibroids and balancing hormones include chase tree berry, which I've used successfully with many women. And in a combination with both the chase tree berry and the black maca, and also in combination with black cohosh, and this is a phytoestrogenic herb. And what this means is that it helps to block from those xenoestrogens getting into those cells because it has a slightly helpful estrogenic effect. So I don't want people, there's a lot of misconceptions about phytoestrogens in the literature. And what most of the literature actually shows is that phytoestrogens are very protective against female disorders and diseases related to our hormones. So, I mean, do your due diligence. Don't take it from me, but do your due diligence all about phytoestrogens and you will see uh, that the research is really supportive in terms of helping to block out those bad xenoestrogens by using plant estrogens. Another favorite favorite herbal medicine is turmeric, especially with the concentrated curcumin, which is great for uterine fibroids as well because it's a natural anti-inflammatory and helps with suppressing any type of growth in the body. So that is really important as well. And studies have shown that especially the curcumin, so that concentrated component of the turmeric is helpful for uterine fibroids. And tip number nine, which is my favorite, and I promise we would get here, all about energy medicine. So when we talk about centering in on our energy and doing some meditation, some deep breathing, but specifically focusing in on the second chakra and the second chakra is an orange color in chakra. When we talk about the different chakras and there are seven on the body, the second chakra is in the reproductive organs area. And this has a lot to do with in terms of having that energy balanced, it is related to the color orange, but also has to do with relationships and sometimes aspects around money and financial distress. And I've seen time and time again with women who are either going through a financial crisis or they stress about money, they stress about relationships or they've had past relationship issues and they've never really cleared that energy that this can be related to the development of uterine fibroids. And once you're able to clear that energy and have peace and resolve around whatever it is that is in that mind-body connection, that's when the fibroids disappear. So it's not to be overlooked. And definitely I want you to check out my meditation that I put together specifically with the right frequency that you're listening to of the binaural beats to help with uterine fibroids. And I want you to listen to that. You can do it every single night just before bed. Listen to that. It's very relaxing, but it's also so a specific meditation with that right frequency of Hertz that you're listening to to have that healing effect on the second chakra. The other thing that you can do is use stones. So some of the orange colored stones or crystals in terms of you know crystal medicine and energy are related to actually cleansing that second chakra. So some of my favorites are orange jasper as well as orange carnelian, fire opal, which has that fiery, you know, look of fire, which is great, those orange and yellow tones, as well as tiger eye, which is fantastic for the second chakra, and amber. Amber is very healing to the second chakra. It's very healing to the body in general, but helps to clear up some of that old stuck energy, especially in that second chakra. So I hope you've got some questions. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you have uterine fibroids, I want to hear how these tips are working for you. I always love to hear your commentary and your feedback as to how the videos are helping you. Please be sure to share this with someone that you know will benefit from these tips and give me a big thumbs up. I know this is a huge topic and we covered a lot of things today, but I hope the tips sincerely are going to help you or someone that you know. So please do share this. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Please make sure that you're subscribed and you turn on those post notifications by clicking that bell and click all notifications so you get my newest and latest uploads, which happens every single day. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching.